Alright, welcome back everyone. I'm Evil Tim and this is Let's Play some other game once again. Other games will continue as well, don't worry my friends. But sadly Activision is here to threaten us. Now, this game is GoldenEye. It's GoldenEye Reloaded, don't you know? The history of this game is a bit complicated. You see, it turns out that Microsoft had Rare working upon a version of GoldenEye for the Xbox 360, which would have been a straight port, you see. Unfortunately, a lion roared at them and that was bad, so it went away. But no, Nintendo also roared at them and Nintendo roared at them with the power of legal things. Copyrights, to be exact. It turns out that there was some dubiousness as to who actually owned GoldenEye. And so, sadly, that was canned, and instead a Wii version came out, developed by Eurocom-type people. That we'll be playing next, so we won't talk about that any further. Instead, we'll get the control settings right and play this one, because this is the uh, port of that one, which is high definitions and also changed quite a lot. Now, Havelock, for those of you who aren't keeping up with your Bond girls, that is uh, the... She is from A View to a Kill, I believe, which is one of those ones that you don't really remember all that well, unless you do. So, that out of the way, let's get on with our single-player game. This is a new save type file, so we'll start on 007 mode so we can earn all of the trophies. Meanwhile, Daniel Craig is there with his terrifying carnivorous on, ear with his PPK. Okay, so this guy is this Tanner, who is a man who lives in your phone, as you'll see later. Only the best will remain certified for field operations. Oh, that's got some gas piston on its stock. That can't be healthy. They've misapplied the textures. Okay, so we've got a variety of training messages popping up, but we're going to ignore all of those and go over here. Meanwhile, we'll be interrupted, but that's not going to afflict us in the slightest. So, Bond has a weird method of reloading here, which is he apparently reloads with attention and then flips the magazine out of his hand anyway, which makes you wonder why he didn't just let it drop on the floor in the first place. He's a bit of a show-off, I suppose, or just wasting time. So, this is your old training section in which you shoot at things, so we'll shoot at things with our gun we shall. Alright, so it's all pretty easy. The game doesn't actually mind if you aim down the sights while you're not supposed to, uh, which is uh, silly of it, but uh, that's that out the way. Now I'm going to show you something that's in this version but not the other one. You'll see that it's not in the other one when we do that video, but that's for the future and this is the past, so that's them out the way. Uh, the thing that I'm going to be showing you in a minute is uh, the power to hide from paper targets because this is a very important skill for an agent type person to have. So, as w this is, uh, apparently this has been an updated version of GoldenEye, so it's been brought forward to the future and we are playing as Daniel Craig, Accountant at Large. There you go, that's an empty reload. Those are unique to this version, the Wii version only has one reload per weapon. The Wii version also has a different gun here, but we'll see that when we get there again. So, we've got the Sigmus, which is an MP5N, and we've got this thing here, the Anova DP3, which is a G36C, and it has a uh, ejection port on the wrong side. I don't know why, because it doesn't eject from it. I guess it's just to be wrong for the sake of it. So, now we'll get rid of these targets here, we shall, in the manner we are accustomed to, load that up and give it a bit of the old karate choppage, and then we shall go through this door and continue our training where our guns will all disappear. That was mean of them. So, let's put this on here because it looks like it needs to be there. Vault over here and continue on with our quest. Now, for some reason, the MI6 headquarters is very grey. It has grey water, grey vending machines, grey dead plants, which we'll see in a moment, and reflections. Yeah, so over here, as you can see, the uh, blinds don't have a reflection. There's a dead plant there, so let's inconvenience the men standing outside for that dead plant. We're a very vengeful fellow, don't you know? And now there are things that are lit. This is to show us our path, you see. So we'll vault up onto here, and then we'll have a look at this vending machine. And you've got, like, uh, yeah, and you've got bar and uh, Thai sausage. And eat me. This is a fairly terrifying machine. I guess the real James Bond must have been along and shagged it, and that's why it has all of those strange, vaguely sexual statements for us. No, we're not going to bother with that. We can uh, sneak through here now, and we've got a brief stealth tutorial. We'll Batman our way through that, and then we will stand up, which is why it's giving us this message. Now, if you walk towards him there, you get another couple of messages about silent takedowns, but I don't care about that, and neither do you, so we just lugged him in the back of the head. And I guess these guys are just temps here or something, and uh, Bond actually shoots them. Oh, come on, really? I know FPS is obstruct you with stupid things, but I mean, those are on casters for crying out loud. Why can't we just push them along? Okay, we'll take out that, sabotaging the training again by walking towards it, and here we go. We have to be careful of that security camera we've just destroyed. I guess we don't have to be very careful, but now we're going to be detected. Gasp, shock, horror. Yes, you get this little scare cord when you're detected, which uh, gives you only a certain amount of time to kill the guy who detected you before you are detected fully, and they send for reinforcements. So, we've completed the training. I guess it's not all that hard to become a secret agent after all. So, now we have to activate the Jellyvator, and we are conclusioned. Now it's time to receive our proper briefing and maybe get into an actual mission or something. Alright, so, here we go. 
smartphone into this is a hell of a smartphone to have this kind of resolution. Good morning, 007. For the past three years, a high-ranking Russian general, Arkady Arumov, has They've been all stealing how to Russian it military the equipment and selling it on the black market. There's a Black no Eagle tank there. I'm not really sure how he stole one of them. They're high-tech weapons production. to a terrorist organization that has been targeting our embassies. And Along with Agent into space. 006, your mission is to infiltrate his base of operations, really destroy quickly. the weapons cache, and, if need be, eliminate General Orgumov. Agent 006 has already surveyed the facility. Secure location. Time is of the essence, 007. Hey, look, there's, there's some heavy security there, too. On route due to pick up those weapons for the terrorists in 45 minutes. Do you copy? This mission is not actually on a timer. Confirm. We're in position. Good luck, James. Okay, so the Dench has given us our orders and we have to do as she says or she'll steal Christmas. I think that's how it works anyway. So uh, he's going to wave his pistol around again and then he will Daniel Craig his way along here. Daniel Craig is a strange man, you know. I'm not really sure what he's all about. I've heard if he goes into a telephone box and changes, he comes out as Clark Kent. But I won't speculate any further than that. So here he is, Daniel Craiging his way along here. And we'll just have to quickly pause that so that we can ensure the qualities of this recording. And not just so that we can try and cut him out of the video. Nope. Right, so we're now in his head, Dan. I loved you in 8 Mile. Just wait until the last truck passes. Okay. You take the one on the right. Okay, so which one of these two is the last truck then? Because uh, it does look like there were two of them. I'm the last truck. I and I'm out of here. There'll be no more. <laughs> no. Let's go. Okay, you notice all the screen tearing, which is because this is a really bad Xbox 360 port, but uh, I can't do much about that, and we got a trophy for doing nothing. Hooray! I see this game is going to be really big on difficulty. We are soldiers of God. We crave action. We live for action. We are men of action. There is no action Let's perform an action on these men. Okay, so we could actually perform inaction on these men because uh, we don't have to do anything here. This is uh, one of the QTEs this game doesn't really care about giving you any sort of timing for, and you'll see something strange about those lights as we continue. But now we've succeeded at that. You, sir, you're in a Daniel Craig from... No, oh, I can't be, please. Okay, right, so he's escaped from us. Just like old times. How many times have we done this before? Watch out for that sniper. I'll get the truck. The, the truck is apparently in the concrete bollard in front of him. Right, so he's going to M&M his way over there, and uh, we, meanwhile, can just have a quick glance around here, and then we're going to get the first of the completely useless Janus emblems. I'm going to show you what I'm looking at there a little bit later, so I won't spoil it for now. Instead, we will sneak down here and get this thing. Now, these don't actually do anything. You just shoot them, and uh, if you shoot them all, you get a trophy, and you get a couple of other trophies as well in the interim. I don't think they even unlock anything, though. Now, for some reason, there's, they try to make the Russian soldiers sympathetic here, but uh, it doesn't really work. Uh, that's an additional line in this version and doesn't really make any sense. Uh, never mind that. Now that we have heard their conversation, we can sneak our way up here and take care of this McSnipington who would have otherwise got us. This is a remake of the first area of the original game. It's pretty much exactly as it was before and there's a few more rifles lurking around and they summon some guards and such like that. So, we've stealthed our way up here, we shot him and now, uh, of course, 006 is going to completely fuck everything up by uh, starting the alarm anyway. I don't think you can avoid that, it's just stupid, so we'll have to just deal with his mistakes. That man's gonna frog his way into cover, but we have the solution to him and his such. So, we've got company heading our way, so let's use our snipety rifle to deal with them. It's got a thermal scope and a silencer, so this should be more than enough to take care of their ways. They, they are all uh, sort of outliney people, so we will deal with them with our ridiculously quiet rifle. But this is not nearly as ridiculously quiet as in the Wii version, as you're going to see in uh, in a soon. So let's see if we can take that guy either had the most generous hitbox in the world, or he had a heart attack. Because it's not like Alec hit him either. So we've dealt with the targets there, and now we can have a quick look around here. Okay, so got that there, and also uh, somebody has apparently left a save file from the original Goldeneye here. I guess if we got that out, we'd be able to play the original game or something. But it's not compatible with our ways, so that's a uh, futile hope and no mistake. Right, so down here we got ourselves some rifles, but we don't actually need any ammo, so I can't pick them up. That's terrible. So you see, we've got a full 240 rounds of ammo. And this thing here, 
Uh, if we just uh, go back and look up at this. This is, I guess, lifted from one of the World War II Call of Duty games, because you can see all the text on it's in German. That doesn't make any sense at all. It's laziness, so it is. So, we found the vital truck which is carrying crates, because um, FPSs never have enough of those, after all, so we'll climb into it and... Oh. Nobody ever died being too careful. Well, I almost just did. By. Okay, so he then sweeps all that into his lap, throws her out the window, because he can't shag her. This He's I not that kind of James dossier. Bond. After the fall of the Soviet Union, he became jealous of the oligarchs, all their new money, and went into business, freelancing for himself. Okay, so he's a freelance military general, and we've got some workmen there. Remember that, it's all be different in the Wii version, you'll see. Wrong, be prepared to move. Uh, is, is the speedometer there showing that we're going at about 60 miles an hour? That, I think it's exaggerating just a little, and it's not gone down either, so I said maybe it's the rev meter or something. Get out of here, stalker. If only we'd remember to bring some papers or something, this would probably be avoidable, but never mind. Okay, so we've got to smash this through, and obviously since going through these areas as we did in the original GoldenEye would be much too interesting, we are instead going to have a rail shooting section, because, uh, well, because. So we can take out the fuel tanks on these, which makes them blow up instantly, because they're full of Hollywood atomic gasoline. Uh, ram that one off the road because Alec is apparently a terrible driver and deal with that as well. So, load this back up and continue with our actions. Uh, we've got all these trucks skidding around. Apparently uh, nobody in Russia knows how to drive so we'll take care of these guys too because that they don't know how to drive either. So, a uh, truck with a 50 cal there but that's no trouble for us. We have James Bondishness even if we are Daniel Craig. So, we'll load that up again and that's going to... I guess it just lives there. And now we will be ambushed by a quick timey event. Press L2 to do that, which will do this. The good thing that wall was there, really. So, take care of the fuel tank. I don't I don't really see how we're going to be able to drive around this, but we are. So, um, hooray. Right, but meanwhile, there is a guy with a rocket launcher there. You can't take this guy out. I've tried it before. He is invincible. He misses us completely, but the truck apparently just hit a bump in the road and turns over. That's terrible and bad. So, uh, we wake up with Trevelyan uh, shooting people. Uh, sorry, I was uh, I was just being unconscious. And apparently someone's coated the floor in KY jelly as well. Is there any end to the horrors of Russia? Look. What the hell are they doing with one of those? Okay, so that's a uh, CH-53 Super Stallion with silly bits stuck on, I suppose. And uh, meanwhile, there are guys shooting at us. Now, those guys running down there can actually hit you in this version, which is silly. So we'll slide down here to avoid them. And then we will hear a conversation. Have you heard anything new? Yet. Probably just another surprise inspection. How kind of surprise inspections do they have? I guess, I guess this suppressor there is planning to fire rifle grenades out of it or something. If you don't press it, he just sort of bobs around or frog-like. So we will press the button to breach him. And these men will all run very slowly towards that. Um, this isn't actually in slow motion. It's just like going at this speed normally. Right, so uh, load that Did back up that and then... Helicopter? Yeah, what of it? It looked EMP hardened, designed to survive an electromagnetic pulse. Uh, thank you, I didn't know what that meant. We'll take care of it. I'm getting a picture for MI6. How, how is that going to happen? It's way away from the... You'll be late reaching the rendezvous point. Stop poking me in the eye. Get on with it. I'll cover you. Okay, let's see how Trevelyan covers us. So, uh, if we look back here, okay, we're getting a field manual message first to tell us about our smarting phone. Right, what he's actually doing is shooting the back wall of the elevator. The slide in his pistol doesn't cycle, which is lazy, and he apparently just shot one at the floor, too. And his lips don't move, either. They're being very stupid here. So, let's carry on over here, shoot this alarm, which we don't really need to do, because no one can find it anyway. They're all panicking on the radio, so we are going to do our 007 agent-type objective here. So, we've got to activate this Wi-Fi node here, and this is um, erasing the evidence of our fabulously clumsy entrance, which we could probably have avoided just by not being stupid, but that's against our religion, don't you know? So there's a little Janus symbol here, we just turn around here, and it's on the door. Perhaps it is foreshadowing, because of course Janus is in there. Meanwhile, there's a watery texture there that isn't actually very good at all, and now we will take this guy out and get ourselves another new weapon. So.
Uh, okay, how many locals try to steal supplies from this dam? It must be asked. So, we've got ourselves a Sigmus, which is an MP5 an MP5KN, because it has a Navy trigger group again. And we'll take that out there, and that will take care of the other two men, which means they aren't alerted. That's good of us. So, now we've got their stuff. We can make our way along here, past this Bernie truck, load up our AK, and uh, we don't actually have the sniper rifle in our inventory anymore, which is different to the Wii version, where you would still have it, as you'll see again. So, over here is more of those things, but we're not interested in them, so let's uh, whip out our MP5 and see what's over here. It's got a 20 round magazine, even though there's another MP5 in this with a 30 round magazine. That doesn't make any sense at all, but uh, it's probably for gameplay balance. And you can see also uh, all the colors, and all the settings on the fire selector are... Well, yeah, we're not going that way. That's a silly way. Instead, we're going to go this way, like a man would. All the colors on the fire selector are white, which means it has uh, safe, semi-safe, and auto-safe functions. That's not on at all. So we'll climb up this ladder and carry on with our procedures. Forward we go, and up. Now this is basically how sniping, how stealth sections work in every uh, level of this game. What you've got to do is just figure out the right order to take out the guys in, so that they don't spot each other going down. Because you see, this game is a T-rated type game, which means that bodies disappear almost immediately. This is largely because uh, bodies not disappearing in certain jurisdictions is frowned upon, like Germany and such, because of Germany's large number of zombies, you see. So, we got ourselves Talker T3. This is got our Talker of TT33 or DD44. If you're into your golden eye thing. No, oh, there we just reload that. It doesn't really make a sound like a DD44 dust OV. And much as it's a bit more realistic for guns to make sounds like this, I do rather prefer it to make a noise like a cannon. But that's not on, it's not realistic, and this is a realistic y type game, as you'll see throughout it, I'm sure. One of the other things you might have noticed is that this level uh, didn't have an X number of years before things show up. Uh, this is because this level isn't actually set in the past, and that is going to cause an absolutely ridiculous plot hole later. But anyway, we're on the dock side. What's on the dock side? Well, it's more of these dudes, so we'll take care of them and uh, fuck it up. Okay, so run stealth now. In certain cases, that would uh, call in more guys, but not here, because there are no more guys to call in, you see. So we'll take him out, and then we'll go along and get ourselves a secret weapon, which is located over here. These chests here, which are locked, almost always contain a nice upgrade weapons. Occasionally they contain ordinary ones, but that's just because the game hates you. And here, we get ourselves a Sigmas Plus Suppressor, which is brilliant. So, th this uh, version of the game is really fond of giving you uh, suppressed automatics. Uh, and there's the next Janus symbol, so we'll load that up again in celebration of that fact. Okay, so over here we've got ourselves this boat here. It's got four Browning M2s, so it's well and truly ready for anything we might throw at it. But it's not, you see. Because if we look our way over here, we know of its weakness, which is this engine. If we shoot that once, it will blow itself apart and sink profusely. That's not what that word means. So, deeper and further onwards we must go in order to locate whatever we're going to locate. Our helicopter is up there, being all foreshadowy, and we'll just mail our way through that door and then carry on down. Now, in the Wii version, if you try and uh, melee or shoot your way through that grating there, you will set off the alarm because the guards can hear you through walls, but not here because they're all stupid. So, now that we've got our silenced automatic, we are pretty much invulnerable, so we'll take care of this guy over here, and then this guy who is leaning over a thing, because that is bad and we don't approve of it. So, that guy was also leaning. These men have uh, criminal leanings, I'm sure. So, let's load that up and carry on forward. We've got a strange little waterfall in here. I'm not entirely sure how this dam works, and I don't think it is either, so uh, we will not question that any further. The strangely atrocious water will foil us if we try. So, up here and round is another couple of guards who are going to be having a conversation upstairs, so we will listen in on their ways once again. Here we go. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, so why is a military general running a hydroelectric dam in modern Russia? Because that happens these days. Right, so we climb up here, we've got two guys to take out before the alarm goes off, but we can do it and we broke the glass as well. Is there any end to our power? No, not even slightly. So let's load that up and carry on. Right, so, now that we've dealt with all of that nonsense, there's no Janus symbols in here, even though it looks like the kind of room where you would hide them. The water's off down there, but we're not. We're going up here instead. So, let's go through here and then use the opposite side of the door. There we are. We've activated its mechanism. So, up we go. 
I guess uh, the idea of this is just to, for Trevelyan to be an incredible dick so that uh, we can just do, do rapid characterization. Right, I don't care what these two guys are saying, so I'm going to interrupt them in the manner only the only manner I know how. So, load that up again, because we have one at things. Alright, so these guys have some weaponries for us as well. They've got the first weapon in the game, which has optics on it. So, we'll deal with this guy here, because he has optics on his head, and otherwise he'd spot us. And then there's another guy directly above us, so we'll have to lurk our way over here in order to foil him before he in turn foils us. That's him out. And we've got here the Sigma Plus Reflex Sight, so uh, we will replace that with, uh, di with replace our Tokoro with that even. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. So, there we go. As you can see, the front sight has disappeared because we're mounting an optic in classic Call of Duty fashion. There's an li odd little thing about uh, carrying two of the same weapon in this game. I'm going to sort of fuck it up here, but, uh, well, you will see it in just a second because I just picked up ammo for it. Right, so fire off a couple more shots than that, reload it, and then we'll switch over to the other one. And as you can see, you only get one lot of ammo even if you've got two weapons that are the same, which is mean of them. So we will We'll swap out our reflexity sight thing for this thing, which is a Dragonov SVD with a thermal e scope. And here is the helicopter. So, as you can see from the fact that it has a, a seven bladed rotor, it is a CH 53E, I believe. E or D, I can't remember. I haven't got my notes here. Uh, don't mind that. We've got to take pictures of its various components in order that we might report it all to MI6. And you can see EMP hardening apparently just involves sticking silly little coils on the side of it. I'm really not sure how that works, but never mind. Let's uh, lurk our way around the side of it here and look at its inexplicably gigantic minigun, which it has on a silly little stub wing, because that's sensible. So, this thing is apparently called a Ludmilla T1. It's also apparently called Bertha, according to that, so... Okay, so... Uh, it's good to see these two work so well together. So let's take care of this truck over here, which will explosion and take out all of the men who would otherwise have attacked us. And then they've got two more guys coming up the stairs, so we'll deal with that. Okay, they're not coming up the stairs. You, you're supposed to be coming up the stairs. You have failed at everything, sir. And now you have failed at living. Your failure is complete, but mine, as Daniel Craig, is only beginning. So we've taken care of those two guys, and now we're going to go the wrong way, because there are stuffs over here. So if we make our way back down the dam, there's a couple of secret things here. We can also discover that Daniel Craig cannot run for any particular distance. He's not very good at running. So, he, he is bad at running. He's also bad at jumping. He can't do that at all, I guess because he is a white man, and as is well known, they cannot jump. So, there's a very bad fire effect. There's also this thing here, which is a ZU-23-2. It's an anti aircrafty gun, and that's not in the Wii version either. So, we'll take care of that. This isn't in the Wii version either. It's a... Uh, we'll find it in a minute. It's climb up here. Sure, nope. We have been foiled by our inability to climb, once again. There's an AK-47 there with an ACOG scope, and we don't have to do any much more stealthiness in this level, so we will take it and make use of it. So, ascending the stairs here, we will find the water texture, which is kind of odd-looking. It's another one of those lakes of wallpaper paste. And if we look over here, how the hell are you supposed to find this? I mean, really, that's just not logical at all. It's bad game design. So, let's pick up this thing, this MJR-409, which is an RPG-7. There it is. It's pretty well modelled in this version, except there's no front sight pin. There's some broken glass here. I guess we managed to shoot it out during our previous adventures. And our truck there is having a good old burn. It's the right way up now. Apparently somebody just turned it back over after Bond crawled out of it. That seems unlikely to me, sir. This game it doesn't seem realistic in the slightest. Now we're going to jog our way along here. As you can see, the AK doesn't have the right sight thing at all. The sight bracket mount is from an MP5 instead, which is lazy of them and doesn't make any sense at all. Now over there there's a sniper in that tower. He's going to try to snipe at us, but we're aware of him, and we were go only going to get hit several dozen times. There's a fiery tongue licking up there. Uh, that doesn't concern us. These men, however, do concern us, and we are going to take care of all of them with our a coggery scope. You'll see in a minute something very strange that you might be noticing about the magazine model for this thing already, but uh, I won't spoil that. That's for the future. So, there's a guy over there hiding behind a thing. So, he's a hiding behind a thing type uh, Russian, and that's bad. So, we'll deal with this friend here who isn't a hiding behind a thing type Russian. I'll load that back up again, and we're going to take a pot shot at this guy over here, because he's trying to snipe at us. He can actually shoot at that without breaking the glass, because it isn't supposed to be there. And he's got a lasery sight to tell us when he's aiming. But here's the thing. The... Uh, magazine is apparently both empty and made of wood on the inside. They just use the textures from the handguard, you see, which is stupid and wrong.
Anyway, pause to clear my throat and carry on. Now, I'm looking at the same thing here again, but we're not going to look at it for a moment longer. There you go. As you can see, the rain effect isn't applied in quite the same way in these lights, and therefore lights in this universe have the power to affect both the motion and frequency of water, which is bizarre and no mistake. Meanwhile, however, a bunch of Russians have come out there going to try to ambush us, but they will fail because we have in fact ambushed them with our lack of stealth. So we can pop up over here to take care of them using our property up command. It's kind of useful most of the time, it's just when you're trying to shoot downwards it can be a bit of a problem. When you're trying to shoot when crouched especially, but uh, that will be for the future, you won't know of it yet. Right, so again the lights are being weird, but there's a better example of that in just a second if you just look at those two lights over there. That one's actually going in completely the wrong direction. So he's created a bit of a diversion to cover our exit. I suggest he should put his clothes back on, but he's not going to listen to us. Okay, so this guy here is talking to Tower 2, which I guess is us. Uh, we'll load that up and shoot at them, because there is actually a trophy here. This thing fr goes way faster in this version than it does in the Wii version. I don't know why I'm doing this, and neither do you, so uh, be quiet. It's probably efficient. Let's instead fire a rocket over there. Okay, so I, I guess Tower 2 always fires rockets at them or something. And there we go, we've got a trophy, Rocket Man. Rocket Man is uh, the trophy we get for killing at least one person in this level with that rockety launcher you see, because it's kind of a secret or something. I really don't know. But anyway, let's uh, swap out this thing for this here uh, SVD with its regular scope. Load that back up there, and then we will melee that man, because he is a bad man. And then it's time for an objective. Here we go, this is downloading the flight plans, and which is apparently in audio. I I really don't know what that's all about. Okay, you might notice that Alex's voice sounds a bit different there. That's because that clip isn't in the Wii version. It was recorded for this version, which uh, I guess he had forgotten how to make his voice sound like Trevelyan in the interim. No, uh, we'll use that and uh, dismiss the upper part of this dam as we make our way back down. Now, if there's going to be anything like uh, the original Goldeneye, this area will be full of exploding barrels, but it's going to disappoint us. There is instead an office. I don't know what that's all about. So this guy here was trying to look out of there, or possibly we out of it, we'll never know, because he is now dead. So there's a group of guys over there. Now, you can be stealthy in this section, but I don't really see the point of it, because a bunch of guys will come out of the far door no matter what you do. I, in fact, nearly get it right here. If I hadn't missed with that shot, I would probably have taken them all out. But sadly, it was not to be. My dreams were thwarted, sir. So, you've got this uh, thing here, which is sort of an approximation of the correct uh, reticle for this rifle, but not really, sir. Not really in the slightest. It's got the little rangefinding thing there. It's, it's called a stadiometric rangefinder. You use it to try and match up the height of people to figure out how far you should shoot, you see. And it's got no ground line, which means it would actually be totally useless. You would just have to try and match up their heads to it and guess where the other line should be. After the fall of communism, the Russians might have invested in some 21st century transportation by now. You'd have thought that line could be about half the length it was as well. So let's load that back up and then realize that actually we want this thing and see if we can pick it back up again. But it's going to give us a bit of trouble there. Right, there we go. We've got it back. This is just so I can look at something, but never mind. We've got to make our way back up here now to complete the other half of that objective. So we've got to do a bit of hacking once again, whip out our phone. This is a glorified use key. And then we will do the last of it. Now, what else can we hack? I think we can hack this. Let's go for it. Hooray! We were successful. Yes, they forgot to put collision detection on it. I really don't know how you make things like that and bugger them up so badly, but it doesn't matter. We'll vault over here and continue on with our quest to find that Trevelli man. Past these explodey bottly canister things, which don't leak even if you shoot them, which is strange. Uh, I think we have. Yeah, I think we outstayed our welcome as soon as we got here. Right, now you might notice that there are two enemy blips on the map there. You might also notice that the gun on that thing is actually turned to face us after he parked. That thing is actually flagged as an enemy. There are two invisible soldiers in it, and uh, it's trying to shoot at us, but it's not allowed to shoot, you see. If it was, the game would end, and that would be bad, I suppose. So, let's go over here in a really fast fashion. He's got his parachute, and he's ready for anything. We're not bungee jumping, because uh, Daniel Craig doesn't do extreme sports except that he does all the others. I guess it just doesn't sound enough like parkour. So, we're being arrested now by this man who has airsoft hand grenades, a stanag magazines that don't fit in any weapon in the level, and, a pist and pistol magazines that don't fit in the pistol he's actually carrying, so he isn't exactly well prepared. He has, however, got a moustache. 
Alright, so Daniel Craig has a plan. What is his plan? He is going to use his ears upon him, perhaps. Alright, so we aim this at him, using our horrible fizzog to distract him, and then prepare to pull the cord, which does that. Now, I'm fairly sure that if you did that in real life, what you, given the state of uh, military contracting in these days, what would probably actually happen is you'd get an IOU pop out and two consultants taking you about Parachute 2015. But never mind. This is a cover version of the uh, theme, which uh, kind of covers the whole game, really. Okay, so it's... So it's called GoldenEye Reloaded 007, and this is our new GoldenEye satellite, which doesn't look like the old one. And apparently the EMP's going to target Darby, which is... Um, is anyone going to really care about that? Yeah. Okay, so he's going to manage a very interesting feat here of firing a bullet with the casing still on it. I never really understood what the hell these lyrics actually have to do with the movie. It sounds more like someone's being stalked, really. Okay, so Daniel Craig goes into the Naked Women pit. You, know, you shouldn't have naked women flying around the name Judy Dench. That's, that's not right. I don't know who that is. Okay, so meanwhile we've got all the women who are going to form into Daniel Craig's face. That's not a good prize. Okay, so Bruce Feirstein actually uh, wrote the next two Bond films and was co-writer on GoldenEye itself, and he's apparently completely forgotten how to write in the interval. He also writes most of the other James Bond type games. So now that that horrible whaling is done with, we've got Eminem here ready to rescue us from nice the waters. Trick. Doing it without a parachute. Trying to show me up? You said we were running late. Let's move. Which one just shoves him back in. Hey, James. For England? For England, Alec. Always for England. It's never for me, is it? Right, so that's that done with, and that is everything for that level. We've completed everything. I am Evil Tim, and goodbye. You will all have a good day, yes.